Welcome back to the channel guys. So many new products coming out lately. What have we got here? So guys, this is the Lilygo T-Deck Plus then. And what a lovely looking device it is. So they've really kind of pulled the stops up with this nice injection molded case here. I think it looks really good, really professional. Um, and it just fits so nice in the hand. It's like almost like a Blackberry from like 2005 or something. It just just looks really smart. Um, obviously, the, you know, with the original T deck, it was kind of um, you know you, could, you had to 3D print your own case, or you could obviously you know buy one from like Zero Fox 3D or or um, you know it's one of the others out there, or you know print your print your own. Um, the Alley Cat cases always looked really good, and I've still rocked one of those on on my other T deck. But this kind of just takes things to a new level now. Like it actually really does look really smart. Um, really like it. It's proper, proper smooth. I'm not sure what this bit is up here. We'll have to pull it apart, I suppose, to see because that that screen just literally goes. Um, there's no hole in there or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it looks looks really nice. You've got an exposed GPS. Um, well, say that it's it's just a UART really, but um, I think the GPS is connected to this. So yeah, this has GPS built in and a 2000 milliamp hour battery and they're managing to fit all of that into something quite slim. I mean, we shouldn't really, shouldn't be any surprise because you can do that do that with smartphones. There's a hell of a lot more inside a smartphone than there is um, one of these devices. But nevertheless, for something that's retailing for, um, it is what, let's have a look on their website, it is going for $70, $70 $71. It is obviously a development device. It's not, you know, like meant to be a completely finished product. Um, but yeah, that's a pretty good price really um, for, for something like this. So you might have noticed that I've got the T-Deck GUI firmware running on here at the moment. Um, and myself and the developer of, of um, the, the actual GUI firmware, uh, Mvirch, Mvirch, I don't know how you, how you kind of pronounce that, but that's his username on Discord. Um, he's he's a, he's a great guy and he's been kind of doing a lot of um, fixes and stuff to, uh, I've been reporting bugs and he's been kind of working on those. So it's been pretty cool, um, you know, just to see this kind of thing take shape a bit more. There are a few bugs still on there this um, and we have run into a problem with this actually running on this T-Deck Plus right now and that is the touch screen is not is not very responsive so you can see here if you actually sort of tap on the touch screen nothing is nothing is really happening so this seems to be an issue with the T-Deck Plus um, particularly not just this one uh, a couple of other people have reported this as well um, even running on the stock meshtastic firmware it seems to be having that same problem so I'm sure it'll get fixed and sorted out once you you know we'll work out what the actual problem is um, but just to give you an idea of how well it kind of runs on on the original T deck you know it's super snappy you know everything kind of works really well it's still not kind of you know end user firmware and it does crash sometimes there's quirks to it but generally you know it's it's actually working pretty well so the other difference i did notice about this device and the um the t -Deck plus is the screens are slightly different can you see they're both on the same brightness and maybe if i can get it to go into the actual um you know node list then you'll you'll see what i mean but the, the, there's a slightly different hue to this uh, this screen on on the original, which is a little bit more colder, like blue um, looking. But um, I'll show you what I mean. But it does seem brighter. This this one is definitely has a slightly brighter screen. The device is completely usable when you use the the uh, like sort of trackball thing in the middle. But that's sort of you know less than ideal. But I have been using this device no problem to send messages and and kind of check node lists and just kind of general debugging at the moment. So yeah, built in two thousand milliamp hour battery built-in GPS, speaker, microphone, you know, it's got everything there as a proper sort of, you know, development environment for a communications device. Um, and obviously, you know, you can run the stock firmware. If you run the stock Mestastic firmware, you're still going to experience the laggy screen, um, but it's less of a problem with the stock Mestastic uh, T deck firmware because you don't really use the touch screen for a lot. You can swipe left and right um, on on that. But yeah, it doesn't really have much touch screen functionality. So you could probably get by better um, using that for now until you know things get updated. But as I say, more people have reported this. We've another two people came out on the Meshtastic Discord saying that their T deck pluses were exactly the same. So I don't think it's a hardware issue. It's more 
um, something to do with drivers or I don't know, but we'll, we'll find out. Let's go and find out what this message was all about. Oh, someone testing, so test, <laughs> okay, and we'll send that out. So yeah, you might have noticed, obviously this hasn't got an external antenna. They've done a built-in antenna on this, which I've yet to have a look at, um, but you have got two cutouts on here for SMA. I'm not sure what this smaller one is. Maybe that's for, oh, what's the smaller connector uh, that you can use for these? But anyway, that's that's might be for that. I don't know yet. That looks like it would be for a, for an SMA. It's about the right size for, for an SMA cutout. So so I may well go that route and actually put an SMA on here, or I might just carry on using it as a sort of uber portable device. And um, we'll have to see how the internal antenna kind of performs. Um, the test that I've done so far, it doesn't seem too bad actually. Um, if we go to my node list, I can probably show you. Yeah, so it's reporting minus 43 from um, a node that is actually just above us. Um, which is a Yagi, and it's not even pointing towards me, obviously. So that isn't that isn't terrible. Um, I wonder what it is. Wonder what it is on this one. Um, yeah, see, th there is a difference. This one's showing. This one's showing minus twenty six. So <laughs> that's the that's a difference. And this is a good antenna as well. I've I've tested this out, and it's it's a pretty good antenna. Other things to note about this initially. Um, if I just kill the lights in here. It's not really make a lot of difference. Um, but if we just put the backlight on for the display, you can see there, this one is noticeably brighter. It almost looks a little bit like, almost like the battery's going a bit flat, um, but it's, it's not. Um, that is just sort of how it is. But yeah, that's another thing I've noticed. The GPS seems to work pretty well though. Um, I always generally get a fix pretty fast. Um, so that's that's good. Again, I don't know where it is in, in here or how they've kind of done this, but again, I haven't ripped this apart to find out exactly where the GPS is, but um, yeah, it, it definitely works well. It's a bit like the T-Echos. The T-Echos always get a good fix. So Lilygo seem to know what they're doing with um, you know, GPS antenna placement and kind of how they've implemented that. It works pretty well. Um, on this device, I've actually got a GPS and a 2000 milliamp hour battery in here as well. Um, and a solar panel on the back. <laughs> but yeah, I've pretty much managed to fit the same stuff in a similar size box and with an additional solar panel uh, as well um, versus, you know, what something that you can literally buy, um, you know, pre-done. And that's annoying. I've just hit the reset, the reboot button on here. <laughs> <laughs> so so to avoid that annoying scenario being doing that in your pocket you might have to remove that or 3d print something that's a little bit flatter so all in all a really cool device i really like these standalone look there's another message coming for this message really busy today um yeah i really really like these standalone devices because i've always been a fan of kind of you know moving away from the smartphone um, in these projects because, you know, who wants to use a smartphone? You use it for most of the time anyway. It's good to just get away from it and do something different sometimes. Um, but also in an emergency situation, these devices, I mean, this one with the solar panel one, you'd be surprised. The ESP32 stuff is starting to get really interesting. The optimization for the power managing and handling has, has really come a long way. Do you remember like in the early days we had the T-Decks and they just smashed through a battery so quick? Well nowadays, like if you run one of these things in client mute, this runs for like two days or something. I, I mean, I don't quite know how. I've measured the current um, consumption of these and in, in a light sleep, it goes down to like 30 milliamps, something like that. So that's gonna give you a really good run time um, you know, for just sitting there on standby. And of course, client mute, it's what we all should be using for nodes that aren't, you know, part of the mesh, um, the proper mesh, as in, you know, if you've got a, a node in your house and you're using a node outside to relay all your messages and, and traffic that way, you should have your uh, local node like this on client mute. Or any nodes that are just hanging around the place, just in client mute, and then they won't start spitting out and repeating, um, you know, stuff that just taking up valuable airtime, basically. So yeah, really interesting device. Oh, there's a message from Royden. Shout out to you, mate. So this device, you know, it's not a massive, massive kind of move away from, from the original T-Deck. It's not really a huge update on the original version. And of course, this one actually, you know, works pretty foolproof on all of the all of the firmware that's out there, whereas this one might need some tweaking to actually get 
get um, to. Well, I'm sure this is gonna. I'm sure this is gonna happen. But if you want to grab one of these, there's an easy solution to sort of instead of putting one of these things together, um, you've got GPS and obviously the 2,000 milliamp hour battery in there, and everything's kind of just done for you. All you've got to do is load firmware on and just and start using it. If you want to do that, the links down below in the description. I think they're on pre-order at the moment, but they shouldn't be shipping in the too distant future. That's it for this one. I'll save the tear down for another time. I know you guys probably want to see it. But yeah, it's Friday. It's time for a beer. Catch you next time.